Destination, Bhutan. Imagine Shangri-La, a beautiful place where there's no crime, no unemployment, no homelessness, and a king who for his people is less interested in GNP, gross national product, than in GNH, gross national happiness. There is such a country, and it's called Bhutan. The world's only remaining Buddhist kingdom, Bhutan lies in the Himalayan mountains to the east of Nepal. The size of Switzerland, it is sandwiched between India to the south and Tibet to the north. Until the 1960s, there were no paved roads, airports, hospitals, or telephones. And there were no visitors until the 1970s. Buddhism pervades all aspects of life and monasteries, shrines, and prayer flags dot the landscape. Every home has a room with an altar for prayers. Many elderly men and women retire to small monasteries and holy places to keep the prayer wheels turning, ring the bells, and ensure that prayers and offerings are made. Boys begin their Buddhist studies as early as age five. But like children everywhere, play is an important part of the young monks' lives. Like the monasteries in Bhutan, the marketplaces have changed little over time. Vegetables of all sorts are sold, coming from small farms in the rural areas. Chili peppers are especially popular. The Bhutanese eat them on every meal, and they're fiery hot. Almost every store in Bhutan is a general store, and there's never pressure to buy. Bhutan takes great pride in retaining ancient traditions, like the festival and dance we saw in the city of Pero. At the same time, the country is far from isolated. Western technology, for example, coexists with traditional culture. This was brought home to us by these young monks in their traditional robes. They're engrossed in their handheld electronic gadgets during a study break. Also, we were impressed by the marriage of modern technology with the ancient sport of archery, the national sport of Bhutan. Archers wear traditional short robes and knee socks, but use powerful, state-of-the-art carbonite bows. So how long will Bhutan remain a Shangri-La? Education and employment will become a critical issue facing the country as more young people migrate from the rural areas to the cities. The increase in tourism and the inevitable flow of technology, consumer goods, entertainment, and other influences from the outside world are bound to test the limits of Bhutan's remarkable culture. Bhutan is still a Shangri-La today. Let's hope it can meet the challenge of balancing ancient traditions and gross national happiness with the demands of our 21st century world.